Well, Barry Swanhoit relates to the caller when needed. <laughs> I didn't know that Barry was a businessman, then a pastor, and now president and CEO of Compassion Canada, a Christian mission agency that is helping to break the cycle of poverty in 27 countries around the world. One week from today, on June 17th, Barry and his wife Sharon will celebrate their 37th wedding anniversary. And I just think it's special that we can all see you together Thank and you. say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And Sharon, I know you're just glad that you have Barry for a 37th right. <laughs> wedding anniversary. Amen. <laughs> oh. uh, we want to just bring people up to date before we go into your story that uh, some have heard part of. Uh, just compassion. I, 152,000 children came to Christ worldwide last year, yes. in this last year, through yeah. Compassion's ministry. Yeah. Just the children in our program, and then far as from our uh, information we have, probably you could multiply that by four or five, the family members that have come to Christ. Absolutely Fantastic. thrilling. You were only going to give five years to this stint with <laughs> Compassion. <I'm telling> you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, what, 27 years? 20, years. 26 years now, yeah. I came, I thought initially five years, that, and then I would go back to pastoring and, and I would be a missions-minded pastor, but that was my strategy. God obviously had a different one. Even in a recession, this is a ministry that has been head-turning because of its growth and success. What do you think the secret is, Barry? Well, I, I'm quite convinced the secret is that we are working with the local church. We're, we're doing what God instructed us to do in scripture, right? We're not competing with the local church. We're not ignoring the local church. But part of Compassion's strong strategy is to partner with the local church. We have over 5,000 local churches around the world now in developing world that we are partnering with. And all of our children, every sponsored child, goes to that local church for the program that Compassion offers. Well, I'm thankful that we have a little visit, uh, one story uh, that we're gonna see out of Ethiopia. Watch this. My name is Salame Wet, and I am 18 years old. I live with my little brother in Addis Ababa, and I am a Compassion sponsored child. I was enrolled in the Compassion program 10 years ago. I come from one of the poorest families in our community. My dad died in 2001, and then in 2002, my mom became very sick and stayed in bed for two months. We did everything we could to care for her, but then she died too. The good thing is that Compassion is looking after us. Because of compassion, we are able to attend school and get food from the project. If we are sick, they make sure that we get medical treatment. And the project workers show us great love and affection. They also make sure that we are safe at home. My hope in the future is that I will be able to give love and care to kids who are in the same situation as me. $35 a month yeah. to sponsor a child. And the focus here really is developing the child. Spiritually, first of all, uh, our whole emphasis is child evangelism and then child discipleship. The other things we do, food, shelter, medical, all of that is in addition to, but our real emphasis is on bringing children to Christ because you and I both know that you, know, you can put new clothes on a person, it doesn't change them give them a new heart, everything changes. And Barry, you're just back from Nicaragua. Yeah, uh, just you, two days ago. You're a man on the go. And this is all, I want to find out as, as we come to the end of our time, how the trauma that you have endured uh, has affected your work. But let's go there. Um, a year ago this month. Today. today. A year ago today. A year ago today, year ago today mm -hmm. you were doing some home improvements. <clears throat> yeah, people are going to watch and think, boy, don't get that guy to help in your home improvements. <laughs> yeah, I was really, we were finishing a, a basement room, a, a family rec room, 
that piece and of wood. This piece of wood, it's which has now sticky. been repainted at the, <laughs> the, because I didn't want it to show the blood. But this piece of wood, I was just trying to uh, to fit it in. It's it's uh, angled on both ends. Just turn it around toward and, the camera. Uh, oh yeah, Barry. right. Good idea. And uh, I was trying to cut this angle, and it didn't fit, so I took it back to the saw just to shave the kind of the width of the saw blade off of it again. This was the very last yes, move the very of last, the entire the, renovation. The last piece of the puzzle I was going to. In fact, Sharon went upstairs to make some tea and that we were going to celebrate. The room is complete. <laughs> Didn't work quite that way. Uh, that piece, my hand slipped, <clears throat> the saw came down and severed my hand. And the interesting thing is when people see all the scars, whether it's on an airplane or, or wherever, they'll say, how deep is the cut, <laughs> right? And, how deep and, is and, the cut? And it's, they, you, they probably don't want to know the answer. No, and I, I say, well, no, it went right through. No, no, I mean, like, how, how deep was it? No, it went right through. Like, right, right, like, this way? No, no, the hand fell on the floor. <gasps> oh, <laughs> then they get it. But the surprise is that it's back. It's yeah. back. When you were here last time, you said you'd gone to the doctor to ask, what is the prognosis? Hmm. What, what can I expect in the return? 60% over quite some time. But yeah, the, the, between the, the doctors, the uh, physiotherapists, uh, all the medical people that I would ask the same question to, kind of the, the, uh, the summary was about 60% over probably a five year period. So here we are at one year today and all the doctors, including my own family doctor who examined it just a week or so ago and said, you are a medical miracle, Barry. Mm -hmm. uh, the progress on this hand is way, way ahead of schedule by, by probably by years. And as you can see, I've got at least 50% use of it already at, at the one year mark. You're running golf this summer. I'm going to golf this summer. I've got my golf clubs already <laughs> out, shining them up. I'm just trying to working on that new grip. I'm just trying to figure out how, how to hold <laughs> it. I've been practicing in the house, just holding it, and I'm ready to go out now and actually attack a ball. <clears throat> what I want people to hear in this short time that we have, this is a miracle. Amen. Yes. But the best news, in the midst of the crisis, the reality, the miracles in the storm. Yes. And yeah. Sharon, one of the things that I think is important. The if onlys. I mean, I could look at this piece of wood, and if, if I were you, I might say, now why did I have to have that yeah. perfect? It yeah. was only a hairline yeah. cut. Yeah. It, it was really okay. I yeah. was just being a perfectionist. You could you could live on that. And and Sharon, you had some if onlys. In oh, fact, yeah. some serious guilt. If only I was there. Um, I went to the basement when Barry called me, and I saw the tragedy that happened. And the first thing that came in my mind, I should have stayed down here with Barry. I shouldn't have made that tea. I should have stayed here and this wouldn't have happened. And when we were going to the hospital, while they were checking him out in the hospital, I was just full of guilt, like it was my fault. It's my fault this happened. I should have been there with Barry. And I have, we have two daughters and both of them have said, Mom, what would happen if you were down there? And I said, well, I probably would have passed out for sure. And they said, how would you have been able to help dad? He would have bled to death yeah. very Amen. quickly. Amen, he would have bled to death. And just to reinforce that, uh, when you first had stitches out, y y you couldn't be there for oh, that, yes. could you? When, when they took, when we went back <laughs> to the hospital and Barry had his stitches taken out, <laughs> the nurse had to leave Barry and come and look after me because I was passing out. And that's the normal her, right? So, that, so that's me. that night of the accident that, that she walked down through this blood to help me, that's that not the God normal her. God was taking that's, me down there. Was it was like he was just holding my hand all the way down those stairs. He was holding my hand. God was wrapping his arms around me while I was wrapping a cord around Barry's wrist. Mm. It was so difficult. It was a dog leash, wasn't it? Yeah. It was dog. a dog leash. And yes. you had the presence of mind in this unimaginable situation to direct your wife as to oh, what to do and what not to do. You initially told her not to come down. Mm. Amen. Yeah, because I, I, I knew what would, ha or I thought I knew what would happen. Mm. And I didn't want her to freak out because I knew I needed her to be up there on the phone, not down by me. And you know, Psalm 23 was so real to me. <clears throat> uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not, I don't have any fear. And 
it was unusual. It was, it was actually... Supernatural? It was supernatural. <laughs> I didn't have an ounce of fear. And one of the things I learned after, realized after, we hadn't talked about, but at the time of the accident, I was taking a baby aspirin every day and a fish oil tablet every day. I learned since that both of them are blood thinners. Oh, no. 